Titi Dangaremba, a renowned Zimbabwean novelist and filmmaker, will go on trial next week for participating in an anti-government demonstration in 2020. She was awarded the 2021 Peace Prize of the German Book Trade and she's facing charges related to inciting public violence. The trial is scheduled to continue on the 10th of August with defense witnesses being called to testify. She joins us now to elaborate further on this latest court decision. Titi, great to see you. How are you? Good morning, Dudu. I'm well, thank you. In light of this um, especially court decision, uh, just maybe let's go back to 2020 and remind our viewers uh, for when you decided to go to the picket lines uh, and protest, what brought that on? There was a call in 2020 for a national demonstration against corruption and I decided that I would heed that call and go out to demonstrate against corruption and against other things that I feel are not working in a proper way in my country and to demonstrate for a better country, a better nation for all Zimbabweans. And two years later, that which you stood up against, has there been progress made? Well, yes, there has been progress made two years later in that the case finally went to trial in May and the trial continues. Last month, the prosecution uh, finished their case uh, having presented a number of witnesses. My defense then applied for dis dismissal of the case on the grounds that the testimony provided by the witness did not provide a, a strong case. The ruling was heard on Thursday the 4th of August and the magistrate ruled that um, based on the witness's testimony, uh, we, the defendants, should be called to explain ourselves further. And this um, need to explain yourself further, you'll be appearing before the anti-corruption court in Harare and we believe that that court um, reports directly to the president. In terms of this whole process playing itself out where you find yourself as a citizen uh, calling you know, the relevant authorities to do something about the situation on the ground, you get subsequent or you subsequently get arrested and now you are facing trial. Should tell us what about Zimbabwe? Well, I do think that this situation does tell us something about the degrees of freedom and lack of freedom in Zimbabwe. I and my accused, Julie Barnes, have not enjoyed our complete freedoms as Zimbabwean citizens for two years now because uh, our activities have been constrained by the processes of the court. And so that means that we are not completely at liberty to pursue our business as citizens. So I think it is a strong message about the way that citizens' liberties are being curtailed uh, in terms of not having the space to express their concerns about their nation um, when they feel that they need to express this. And then, of course, my case is only one case of many. Uh, we have many uh, op opposition voices, whether these are uh, political opposition or civil opposition voices that are in prison at the moment on various charges uh, without bail before trial. So, again, that is an even greater curtailment of the citizen's freedom uh, because uh, imprisonment before trial is already a form of punishment uh, which really um, generally should result from having been found guilty. And so uh, my case and these other cases uh, with figures including Job Sikala, the chairperson of the Citizens Coalition uh, uh, for Change, um, people like uh, Godfrey Sitole, also of the same party, and many others. 
shows that uh, the liberties and freedoms of Zimbabweans are really being decreased. Hmm. There's targeted sanctions against specific individuals in Zimbabwe and the government has been making a case for several years now for those sanctions to be lifted, claiming that it impacts the economy directly and some of the conditions, you know, for the lifting of these sanctions, including making sure that people enjoy, uh, you know, human rights, uh, for instance, and freedoms that you speak about. And so... When you take a look at the response um, from other nations on the continent about the situation in Zimbabwe, or the lack of response, rather, uh, what does that tell us? Dudu, I have heard responses from nations, uh, definitely in SADC, where there has been great solidarity to push for the removal of sanctions. It is very clear that sanctions on a country do affect the economy. I am not equally clear how sanctions on individuals affect the economy. However, I would say that imposing sanctions is a decision by a sovereign nation. My concern is with the decisions and the actions of the Zimbabwean government vis-à-vis -vis its citizens. I am not really engaged in international affairs. Hmm. Fair enough. You could be anywhere in the world. You are loved in many parts um, of the world. All you have to do is put your name on Google and go to many articles. Uh, why stay in Zimbabwe? Are you speaking to us from Harare? Why fight so much to see change? That's very kind of you to... Uh, say today that I am loved in many parts of the world and if it's true that's really wonderful and yes I do have a sense that my work resonates in many parts of the world and that is very positive for me however my work is the work of a Zimbabwean writer who writes about being Zimbabwean in Zimbabwe and I do appreciate very much that my work resonates and there are wonderful generous people out there who appreciate what I do but what I do is bound up with my Zimbabweanness, and uh, I would not want to be deprived of the opportunity to live out my Zimbabweanness in Zimbabwe. Mm. As you rightfully say, your work over the years has also taken a look at the issue of human rights, corruption, um, etc. It, it, there's always a positive side to, to things, right? Maybe not always, but most of the time there's a silver lining. Could we see another film or another book uh, coming out from this experience? Well, very definitely the life that I live informs my writing. Um, I cannot write about things I have no idea of, and so uh, everything that happens to me is definitely grist to my literary mill. What are you hoping and for? And my cinematic mill also. <laughs> what are you hoping for, finally, um, on the 10th of August? On the 10th of August, I look forward to presenting my case, to having witnesses who were present at the time uh, in talk about the disputed elements as to whether what was written on the placards that I and Julie carried was abusive and intended to incite Zimbabweans uh, to public violence or to incite Zimbabweans to act of bigotry or to incite Zimbabweans to breach of the peace. So I look forward to um, clarifying matters on that issue. And we look forward to uh, hearing from you once that process is done. Thank you very much for availing yourself on this Saturday morning.